Hello everyone, welcome to the Java course. In Java, we have a special data type called strings. It is not regarded as a data primitive, but instead it is a built-in class that can create objects. When we want to join some characters together, we need to set up a string. So in general, we can set up a string in this way. Now I want to set up a string, but um, in general, we need a reference variable first. My string is a reference variable to a string object. So for now, um, when I simply set up a reference variable, the object, which is a string object, is not yet created. and this statement simply say, says that I create a reference variable that would point to a string object. And we have to notice that the uh, string here has to start with capital S. How can I create a string object? Now I'm going to do so. One way to do so is using the new keyword. It is quite similar to what we did for creating user-defined uh, objects from user-defined classes. So when we use the new keyword, the memory system will have um, to allocate some memory space to store the op string object that contains this content. This is a string. So now the reference variable called my string is storing the reference of that um, string object and what's the mechanism of this kind of um, reference variable assignment it is like that I first create an object, and the reference of this object is stored in the uh, reference variable called my string. And then we do something else. We pass a copy of the, of the string reference to um, the print line method in order to print the uh, my string method. Uh, sorry, in order to print out the my string uh, object out. How can I do that? So when I type this um, instruction, I um, pass a copy of the string reference obtained by the my string variable to the print line method. So the argument or the um, actual parameters uh, for the print line method is simply the copy of the reference from the my string um, variable. Okay. So more formally, we say that we pass a copy of the string reference to the print line method. Then the print line method would display the string object referred to by the reference variable called my string. So let me try it now. Okay, I get the string coming out. So that's the mechanism of uh, the print line method. Now I create another string in another way. Okay, I can uh, create a string object and then I assign the reference to a reference variable in just one line like this. When I use the new keyword here, I create another string object in the memory system. And 
this um, new object has a very has a reference which is stored in my string two. So in this case, I create um, two string objects. Although each content is the same as each other, in Java we treat um, two reference variables as pointing to two distinct string objects. How can I know that? I can do something like this. I can show that the two string references um, stored in my string and my string two are not equal. I just want to equate the two reference variables. And what will I get? Yes, I will get false. Why? Because uh, two reference variables are storing two different references. That means I created two um, string objects in the memory. So even though the content stored in each of the um, objects is the same, we still treat uh, two objects distinct okay um one way of uh, uh, string object assignment is by means of the new keyword we have another way called string literal what does it mean by that it is very similar to what we did for um data primitive assignment Let me see how I can do that. You see, the format is very similar to primitive data type assignment. Data type uh, variable equals uh, the string content. So the content um, surrounded by the double uh, quotation marks is known as the string literal. So I'm going to set up another um, reference variable called my string3, and this reference variable is storing the reference of the um, uh, string object whose content is th this is a string. Um, we have to notice that we have now three um, string objects with the same content, but when we create a string literal in this way um, we really create another string object in the memory space so now we have three distinct uh, string objects we can show this idea later to you now I have another string literal assignment my string 4 is assigned by the uh, address of the string literal. But we have to remember something. When we do um, string literals, um, the string created by the string literal is, on, is not um, duplicated. That means when we have um, two um, string references, with the same string literal content, both um, reference variables would point to the same object in the um, memory space. I can show something like this now. Let me try to print the result. I will get true. Why? Because the two reference variables are storing the same reference for this 
a string object created from a string literal. So when we uh, do the assignment with the use of uh, string literals, we have to notice this um, important property. We don't create another um, new string object when we have the same content for both string literals. Uh, this is quite sensible because Java doesn't want to uh, wait some memory. When we use the literal approach to assign two reference variables with the same content, Java is simply going to treat the two assignment as pointing to the single object. Um, so in Java implementation, it just treats the two re reference variables as pointing to the same um, object in the memory space. But how about um, the comparison between my string 2 and my string 3? We can see the comparison now. When we compare my string 2 and my string 3, we will get false. Yes, I will get false because I am comparing two different references. When I use the new keyword to create a string object, um, my string 2 is storing the reference of this um, string object. But when I create, a, create another object by means of string literal, Java is helping me to create a, a, a distinct string object in the memory space. So my string 2 and my string 3 are actually pointing to two distinct objects, even though the contents of the objects are the same. So we have to notice this um, important property of um, string references. Okay, next, the, the next part is about the um, comparison of the contents inside the strings. When we use the um, double equal signs, we just compare the um, references of the reference variables. But when it comes to comparing the string contents, how can we do that? We can make use of the equals method uh, provided by this uh, string class. How can I do that? Okay, when I use the equals method uh, of the string class, I will get true in this case, even though the uh, reference variables of my string 2 and my string 3 are storing different um, references. Let me see. Yes, I will get true. Because the equals method is going to compare the contents of the um, string objects. So for my string 2, it is, uh, this is a string being the content. And for my string 3, it is also, the, this is a string being the content. So when I want to compare the contents, I can make use of the equals method. So even though two string objects are distinct, as long as the contents are the same, I will still get true. So that's the uh, idea of comparing the contents instead of comparing the references of, uh, stored in the reference variables. And we have to notice one more important uh, property of strings in Java. In Java, strings are immutable. Let us see uh, an, an example that illustrates this important property.
Okay, now I have another string object called this is another string. Okay, so I create another new object, but I still use the original uh, reference variable called my string2, which originally points to a string object whose content is this is a string. So in this case, um, Java is not um, correcting the original object content. Instead, um, Java will create another object, and then the original object whose content is this is a string will be orphaned. So um, my string 2 is no longer pointing to the original object. Instead, it now points to the new object whose content is this is a, another string. So what does it mean by that? Um, Java will um, clean the original object called this is my string by means of the garbage collection mechanism. So that object will be removed by Java automatically for us. So this is the essence of immutability. Java will not change the original content of a given string object. Instead, it will create an, another new object and then it will let the original object orphaned. So in this case, we don't create, uh, we don't change the contents of, of the object. So that's the meaning of immutability of strings in Java. I can print the, uh, my string two out. Yes, I will get this is another string. So the original um, string object called this is a string will be removed by Java garbage collection mechanism. And then I'm going to tell you something about object reference assignment. What does it mean by that? Um, let me show you an example to il illustrate the property of it. Now this assignment statement is going to assign the reference contained in my string 4 to another variable called my string 5. So both objects would point to the same uh, string object because these two reference variables are storing the same reference. So they were uh, pointing to the same object. How can I know that? I can show you the uh, result by printing it out. Yes, I will get th this is a string. Uh, my string 5 is not pointing to another new object. Instead, it points to the object which my string 4 is also pointing to. So that object has two references now. How can I know that? I can check the reference equality of the two re uh, reference variables. Yes, I will get through in this case. So they are actually pointing to the same object. So we have to notice the uh, object reference assignment in this um, pattern. It doesn't uh, allow us to create another object. Instead, the two reference variables are pointing to the same object. Another situation is about the null string in Java. Let me uh, create a new string object.
Now I have a string object whose content is a string, and the reference variable to locate this object is my string six. Now I turn the content of my string six to null. What does it mean by that? My string six is no longer pointing to the original object. Instead, it simply has nothing to um, point to. So in this case, the original my string uh, a string object will be orphaned, and in this case, garbage collection will help us to remove that object from the memory. And of course, when I print the my uh, my string six out, I will get null. Yes, I will get null. So in this situation, my string six is no longer pointing to the original um, string object. It simply has nothing to store, and we can say that my string 6 is having no as its value. Now let me show you some ways to um, store the um, results coming from some string methods into primitives. Uh, one property is called length, which is going to find out the length of a certain um, string. And here, let me repeat the string that I'm going to use. This string is already defined uh, at the beginning of the um, source code. How can I make use of the um, length method. I can use the length method of the uh, my string object. So this method is going to tell me the number of characters, including the spaces in a given string whose reference variable is called my string, and then I store the result into a, an integer primitive called length. So let me see the result by uh, following the principle of the counting. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So altogether I have uh, 16 characters. And the variable chord length will ha have a value of 16. Yes, the answer is 16 when I print the result out. So that's one way of storing the result coming from a string method to an integer primitive. I can show you another uh, example of Boolean value. The equals method to string objects is like that. I'm going to check whether the contents of uh, my string 5 is equal to that of my string 6. So in this case, um, my string 6 is, is a string, but my string 5 is simply equal to the my string 4, which is this is a string. So the contents of the two objects are different. In this case, I will return false. How can I know that? I can print it out to see the result. Yes, the answer is, is false because the two strings are having different contents. So in this case, I simply um, get the 
Boolean value coming from the equals method. And I will store the uh, Boolean value to a variable called its same content. So its same content is a Boolean primitive. And I print the Boolean primitive out by using the print line um, method. Now I can show you other commonly used methods of, of strings. Of course, I have to repeat the string that I'm going to use. I will go to use my string as uh, my illustration. I can find out the index of the character, uh, which is this one from the my string um, object. That means I, I want to check if this um, letter or character exists in the um, my, my string object. What is the first position of this um, letter in the my string? So that means I'm going to find out the first occurrence of this um, character in the my string object. But we can see that uh, there is no k in the content of my string. What will I get? Uh, let me print the answer out first. I will get minus one. Minus one means that this character is not existent in the uh, string object. And for um, string objects, the index starts with zero. So this is index zero. This is index one, index two, index three, index four, and so on. For um, this character, there is no um, place in this um, my string object, I would read, get a minus one as the answer coming from the index of method. So the index of method is going to return the index of the first appearance of this character. If this character is not present, I will get minus one. And one more thing. The index starts with zero. So that's the important point to note when you use the index of method. In addition to checking one character, I can make use of the index of method to check uh, two or more characters. When I put a string inside the index of um, method, it simply gives me the index of the first appearance of this string. So I'm going to give this part as the uh, first appearance of the uh, specified string. So I would get two as the answer. Let me see the result by um, printing it out. Yes, I will get two as the answer. The reason is that I can find out this pattern in the in the third character, which is simply index two of the uh, my string object, okay. Um, I can also get the um, k 
character when I give the index to find in the string. I can use char at method. Index zero means that I'm going to point out the character which is having index zero. So I will get capital T as the answer of the um, a char variable. Let me see. Yes, capital T, because index zero is meaning the first character in the string. Now I'm going to introduce a method called substring. When I want to get the substring starting with index 5, how can I do that? Okay, when I do so, I'm simply going to get the uh, substring starting with index 5. So I would get 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we start with index 5, and I will give the string starting with index 5. So I will get is a string as the answer. Let me see the result. Yes, the answer is, is a string, because I start with index 5, which is simply this uh, character. And from this character onwards, I would print the remaining part of this original string. And when we want to um, obtain a substring, which is simply inside the original string, I can make use of the substring method again, but I have to put another um, set of um, actual parameters. When I want to create a substring starting with index 2 and ending before index 9, I can do something like this. I can print the result out. I would get is is r. Why? Because I start with index two, which is this uh, small letter i, and then I will end before uh, reaching um, index nine. So I would have index indices two to eight being uh, printed as the answer. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I would have um, this portion being coming out being printed out in the um my short string to uh, reference variable so we have to notice that this uh, this index is not included in the answer this is an important property of the substring method when we want to uh, capture uh, a substring in the middle of a given string. Uh, we have to notice that the second um, actual parameter is not the index that we will put into the um, uh, answer coming from the substring method. 
Okay. Another example of the um, string object method is, is this one. We can concatenate two strings. I have two string objects. The first one is, is this one, and the second one is this one. When I want to join the two uh, strings into one, I can do something like this. When I have the concat method, I will join the first um, string with the second string. I can print the result. Yes, the answer is simply I like Java and the uh, combined string or the concatenated string of simply this long. I can change the um, letters in the string to all lowercase by means of the to lowercase method. Let me see the implementation. I can use the two lowercase method to turn all the contents in the my string uh, object to all lowercases. Yes, the answer is like this. This is a string. All the um, letters are now small letters. Uh, actually, we can turn all the letters to uppercase letters similarly. The uh, method is called to uppercase. Let me see the result. Yes, this is a string with all letters being uh, capital letters. And finally, I would like to um, introduce one very useful uh, method called trimming. When I want to uh, remove the leading spaces and the trailing spaces in a string, I can make use of the trim method. Suppose I have such a string. I have some uh, leading spaces here and trailing spaces there. Now I can use the trim method to remove the leading spaces and the trailing spaces. What will I get? Let me run it. Oh sorry, I need to change the variable name to that one.
Okay, I've got Hello World as the answer. The leading spaces and tra trailing spaces are removed, but the spaces in between the trimmed uh, string will still remain. So it is important to know that the spaces in the middle won't be removed. It is an important property of the tree method. We just remove the leading ones and the trailing ones. So after the introduction of the string objects in this video, I hope you are able to make use of the strings wisely. And most importantly, you should be able to understand the um, issue about the reference variables, especially by, mean, uh, by using the um, string literals. When we use string literals, the uh, reference variables might have different treatments than the, the situation when we use the new keyword. This is the end of, of the video. If you have any questions about my video, feel free to leave your comments on the comment section below the video. If you like this video, please give me a like and please subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.